The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Full Melt. Hello, everyone. I'm Patty Ann Brown, and you are in the Strategy Room. A Colorado bill would allow some children to bring medical marijuana to schools. It's gaining nationwide attention. Supporters say the bill would help more than 500 children in the state who suffer from seizures. Many, they point out, moved to Colorado to get help and have access to marijuana. So here with their take on that, Republican strategist Robert O'Brien and Democratic strategist David Mercer, thank you again for joining us. So currently these kids uh, can't you. use even the strain of marijuana that's low in THC because it violates the school drug-free zones. So this would allow them to use it if they have a doctor's note. David, is this a good idea? Uh, I think it is a good idea, and I think that the prior code or law that you mentioned in terms of drug-free zones might be changed to be illegal drug-free zones. And for medicinal use, as you're uh, raising the question regarding those uh, for medicinal purposes need to take it, I think the cost-benefit analysis would accrue to their benefit that would outweigh uh, any cost uh, associated with it. And as long as they have the note or other uh, ways to monitor and to uh, curb the use beyond uh, the, uh, m those students that need the medicinal use of it, uh, I think would be fine. Robert, uh, only 500 kids across the entire state, and a parent or caregiver would have to go into the school to administer the marijuana. So it is tightly controlled, and, and supporters, as we mentioned, say that it would help these uh, kids to control seizures and uh, some other issues they have. Are you in favor of changing this? You know, I, I'm not, but I think one thing we're all in favor of, and that's making sure that uh, sick kids uh, that, that need treatment get the treatment they need. And, it, and if there's a THC-based treatment for kids with epilepsy, that's something I'm particularly sensitive to. I have a family member with epilepsy, and those, you know, any sort of relief that they can get uh, is important. Uh, what I'm concerned about, though, is, you know, more marijuana uh, rather than less marijuana in schools. I mean... You know, let, let, let's face it, there, there already is marijuana in schools, and, and I'm concerned about the edibles and, and some of these other things that, have, that are causing deaths in, in Colorado. Uh, and the Colorado state government has come out and said that the, the THC-laced edibles, the snacks, the treats, the candy, are a real danger to uh, kids in, in Colorado. So uh, e even in a tightly regulated regime, you know, I, I, I don't think more marijuana in the schools uh, is a better idea, you know, and, and, you know, the kids need to get the treatment that they, they deserve, and if, if it's an efficacious treatment, that's great, but I, I don't want that in the schools. David, uh, the bill would also limit the number of plants that a caregiver could grow uh, for medical purposes. Right now, there are no limits. Uh, so, again, the bill is designed to put controls on the growing and the usage of pot, uh, but what about what Robert said? Are there concerns... Uh, of what could grow out of this being passed? Well, I think the concerns are, are there, but I would point out that whether this law becomes law or not, um, there's going to be marijuana at schools. As we all know, there is marijuana and other drugs at schools. What we should not do is let that fact get in the way of the children who need medicinal use of marijuana to have that cure and that um, relief that uh, prevents epileptic attacks or seizures and other uh, maladies that they may encounter. So that is what I would caution on, and one doesn't have to come to the exclusion of the other. You still need to govern and make sure that there is not excess marijuana and drug abuse on campuses, but not to the exclusion of aiding those children that need it for medicinal use. Robert, uh, yeah, they're trying to uh, toe the line here. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, folks from other states moving to Colorado uh, specifically for this. Do you see this uh, becoming a trend nationwide? Well, I, I think it's something we've got to watch with a lot of concern, especially with this idea that, that folks can grow up to 99 plants in their basement for medicinal purposes. I mean, one of the things that you're seeing in schools in California where there is some medical marijuana use uh, is the medical marijuana is showing up at high school parties and that sort of thing. It, it really is a problem. You know, and you know, we talked about the economy in the last segment. Uh, legalized marijuana, which is, is taking place in Colorado, it, it's not that, that experiment has not proven to be entirely uh, happy so far with the deaths and 
Uh, you know, we, we have a company that's that just announced that it was moving out of Denver to South Carolina, a manufacturing company, because its employees were showing up high. And look, uh, you know, manufacturing equipment and and marijuana probably is not a good mix. We certainly know that marijuana and you know high standards in the schools is not a good mix. Uh, so even here in California, where we have a very liberal, progressive governor, Jerry Brown, you know, he's come out against the legalization of marijuana in California. And, and we've got to be very careful about how this, you know, this medical marijuana seeps into recreational use and gets into the hands of our kids. And, and so, look, there, are, there, there may right. be some legitimate medical reasons. Uh, we've got, we got to look out for, for sick patients. All right. We'll see what happens in Colorado and elsewhere. Robert and David, thank you again for joining us. And please check Thank out FoxNews.com for more on this developing story. I'm Patty Ann Brown. Thanks for watching. Are you high? I'm what are you high. talking about? It's, it's the full, full melt. Give me a break. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, news culture, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Hey, welcome to another week filled packed with cannabis news, entertainment, and lifestyle on the Full Melt Show. I'm Steve Green, and I've got no punches to pull today. I'm not featuring any fantastical, whimsical guests. I'm not inviting your calls to the program, although you may call at 1-844-420-TALK. <laughs> Did I confuse you there? I hope not. Uh, look, what I'll do instead is offer to you the news as it comes. Because I, I'm just telling you, if you get on Google... And Google Marijuana News and look for what's going on in the world of marijuana today. Not cannabis news, but marijuana news. You'll find an endless plethora of news stories occurring about marijuana today. And a lot of them are just, you know, from states that don't have recreational or uh, medical laws in place. Some of them, some of those stories do apply to those states. But just in the instance, I'll just give you a glance over of the headlines, because this is what our feature on the program is today. Marijuana news. Um, and, and then you, you can maybe tell me if indeed this uh, subject isn't so broad that uh, we probably couldn't do a four hour program daily on the <laughs> that the subject matter just is so prevalent. I mean, I never dreamed that I would honestly. Uh, turn on the internet and see so many stories related to marijuana and cannabis. But just uh, for a glance over, nine-year-old brings marijuana to school, mother and stepdad say. They're behind bars. So, I mean, this is uh, KDLT News. Uh, KDLT is reporting that, uh, and this uh, story came out uh, today in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A mother and stepdad are behind bars after the woman's nine-year-old son brought marijuana to school. Now, this isn't an, an unheard story. This has been going on for eons. Sioux Falls police were uh, called last Friday to Hawthorne Elementary School for a drug-related incident. They had a nine-year-old boy who had brought a bag of marijuana to school with him. See, he didn't bring candy. He didn't bring uh, the pot-laced brownies or cookies or other snacks. He just brought the straight-up weed. Officer Sam Clemens says the elementary age student took the small bag filled with just under a gram of marijuana. So we're not talking about a big sack here. We're talking about, uh, a, you know, an amount of marijuana, depending on how big your hand is, about the size of the tip of your thumb. Uh, and he showed it to other students. Further investigation led the school resource officer uh, and police to a home on the 800 block of North Duluth Avenue. You see how uh, this leads back to your homestead. The officers went to go take the boy home to mom, said Officer Clemens. While he was talking to mom, he smelled marijuana coming from the house. Police say while serving a search warrant, they found meth, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia inside the home. This is uh, typical marijuana news. I mean, it comes from, uh, you know, Breadbasket America in Sioux Falls at KDLT. 
Um, another quick overview. Marijuana laced gummy bears, pot sold at novelty store, police say. <laughs> now, this is in Florida. This is the Sun Sentinel. Uh, maybe I no, take that back. Is this is this in Florida? Uh, Sun Sentinel is Chicago, isn't it? I think it's I think it's the Chicago Sun Sentinel. Oh, get rid of the stupid advertisement. I always got to give you the stupid advertisement while you're trying to read the story on air. And now I've lost the story altogether. What the hell happened there? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's what uh, happens um, in live radio. Uh, so this is uh, Sun Sentinel. See, I want to say Florida. Where is this? Uh, this is in plantation. So this has to be Florida. Over-the-counter sales of marijuana-laced gummy bears and ounces of pot have prompted the arrest of the owner of a plantation novelty store, court records show. After an informant tipped off plantation police about illegal drug sales at the shop, an undercover detective made two separate marijuana buys at Cozy Corners Novelties, uh, 4244 Peters Road, according to a search warrant. Uh, the first buy on March 23 yielded nine grams of marijuana. So they're selling outright marijuana there. Uh, they've got uh, electron, uh, an electronic cigarette with THC liquid for 40 bucks. The second buy on April 2nd was heftier, 32 grams of marijuana and eight THC gummy bears for $200, according to a search warrant. When the detective were, uh, returned to make a third buy on April 9th, the store owner, uh, Richard uh, Delapaz, 44, was arrested and police confiscated cocaine, marijuana, psilocybin mushrooms, THC liquid and a variety of marijuana laced edibles. You see, this is this is just, I think, uh, what people uh, don't understand as a whole. The marijuana is when it's in the black market is going to show up in the news like this. Uh, because this guy obviously thought that he could get away with, uh, you know, under the counter selling of marijuana at his novelties store. And, uh, you know, sell controlled substances uh, to the public at large. Uh, in various forms and fashions. And it, uh, it seemed to be not just, uh, obviously, uh, you know, held down to marijuana. There was cocaine in there. Uh, they found, it's, it says here that uh, four days after his arrest, he posted a big bond released from jail, so the bond was $254,000. So he was making enough money to cover his bond, apparently. Uh, but uh, he's pled uh, not guilty to five felony charges, trafficking cocaine, two counts of selling cannabis, Possession of with intent to sell and possession of a controlled substance, according to court records. So this is just a quick overview. There's a couple more stories like this I'd like to point out. And then get into the bigger marijuana news as it happens today. Uh, this is the Full Melt Show. Don't go away. You're getting the Full Melt. You know, it's not easy out there, but it can be easier. And when it comes to medical marijuana in Michigan and chronic pain management, Dr. Bob Townsend, renowned for his patient advocacy and deep understanding of how patients and medical marijuana certifications fit together, makes it his hallmark to educate and provide the best holistic treatment for your condition. His knowledgeable staff makes you feel warm and welcome, and Dr. Bob makes you feel well. With locations across the state in Cadillac and Gaylord, Kalamazoo, Marquette, Mount Pleasant, Muskegon, Saginaw, Traverse City, you can't beat the convenience and feeling you get knowing you have someone on your side that can cares denali healthcare is on the web at denalihealthcaremi.com get answers to your holistic health questions or schedule an appointment now by calling 989-339-4464 chronic pain management and holistic health answers is what they do it's all they do denalihealthcaremi.com get your certification and peace of mind now by making an appointment with dr bob townsend at 989-339-4464 Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. They're parasites. They've got no contribution to this society. They're preying on our community and our kids. It's going to end badly. We've got exactly $100,000 in cash in the back of this car. I bet there's guys right there in that prison for doing just what we're about to do. I want 
the Breckenridge Cannabis Club to be a household name. This is us pioneering a new industry. He's going after every resort town in Colorado. His plan is brilliant. This is a big boy operation now. We are not the Amsterdam of the Rockies. We're Breckenridge. Absolutely unbelievable to us that this has happened so quickly. That's when the town erupted. All hell can break loose. I think we have an image to protect. The powerful elite has definitely put the pressure on. Everyone is playing everyone. They're going to have a target painted on their back. That is a real threat. There's $2 billion to be had next year. I plan to take more than my fair share. High Profits, Sunday night at 10 Eastern on CNN. Does your dog or cat suffer with joint disorders, arthritis, anxiety, cancer, chronic pain, or other ailments? Hemp or cannabis-based medicinal products are now legal. Why should your pets go without the same options that we have available? Try Satipis, a daily hemp oil with CBD. Satipis is quality inspected and made in the USA. Easy to use drops are applied directly to your pet's food. For your pet's wellness, try Satibis Drops. Ask for Satibis at your local pet store or learn more at PetPain.com. With this warmer weather, I get more active. Headaches and pains keep me from doing things I enjoy, like golfing and working outside my yard. Toledo Hemp Center's new location, 1415 Sylvania Avenue, has shown me there is an alternative to pharmaceutical drugs. I use CBD, cannabidiol, infused hemp lotions, oral sprays, and topical oils. Thank you, Toledo Hemp Center, for helping me restore and maintain my health with no side effects and no high. Find out more at ToledoHempCenter.com. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. I'm sorry for everything, no, everything I've done. So marijuana news is what we're talking about today uh, because it's everywhere. It's so pervasive. I'll give you a couple of a couple more quick headlines. When we find something that's, uh, I don't know, interesting to delve into, we'll delve into it a little heavier. Here's some more headlines. I could go on forever with this. And I mean forever. I won't do it to you, but I could. A uh, man wanted after marijuana guns seized in a southern Indiana drug sting. Sheriff's investigators seized 699 pounds of marijuana. This is out of uh, KGBT TV uh, out of Hild- Hildeg- uh, Hildalgo County Sheriff's Office. Uh, that's out. Uh, where is that? I, I, I honestly don't know where this is. Uh, let me see if I can tell you. Oh, stupid things. Um, so here we go. If it'll let me over there. Uh, da, 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 da. This looks like it is Action for News Staff. ValleyCentral.com. This has to be uh, somewhere out in California. Must be in California. Uh, seized about 699 pounds of marijuana Friday in Mission, according to a news release by the uh, Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office. Um, these stories are are just everywhere. Uh, boy, I hate the ads. They pop up like every 10 seconds. Police, hundreds of pounds of marijuana found stashed. This is WDRB in Louisville. Um, this is uh, just, you know, right down uh, by the Ohio border there uh, in Kentucky. Hundreds of pounds of marijuana found stashed in Chamberlain Lane storage lockers. This is mainstream news. This is the thing that we call the drug war. That is uh, creating these illegal places for this trade that is never, ever going to stop. Uh, hundreds. Uh, OK, I will skip over that one because I want to get back to that one later. Uh, I'm going over the mainstream news, just the everyday people's news. Uh, Kansas's broad medical marijuana bill attracts bulk of GOP votes. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, various and sundry it's time to legalize marijuana arguments, including the Seattle Times medical marijuana activists take takes state to task for uh, the safety. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the rest of this is because I don't have the finished headline. Uh, for the safety of Washington's uh, of marijuana in Washington state's pot system. But labs in the state agency that regulate pot question its findings and tactics. <laughs> see, now you see you got these midline arguments. you got the mainstream news about all these busts happening, uh, like the little shop in Florida. Uh, that was trying to sell medibles and uh, THC liquid and, you know, who knows what else he had there. Apparently there was cocaine and other stuff. He was just, he was selling gummy bears and candies and stuff. Um, you've got those kind of stories uh, where this could happen anywhere USA. It points to the black market. It points to what we've made criminal. 
in this country in a crazy way. And then you've got these midline arguments about the medical or legal states. Arguments, arguments, arguments there. And then you've got the news focused on the politics. What's happening with the politicians? Which state is arguing what argument next? Uh, Who's coming online medically? Who's coming online recreationally? It's confusing. It's spaghetti strings of news, all intertwined and tangled together. Hopefully, we'll be able to make some, you know, heads or tails of this stuff for you here today. Um, then you get into the, so uh, let's uh, point out some of these other stories uh, about uh, marijuana law poses dilemma for Republican presidential hopefuls. This is out of the L.A. Times. It's published on May 9th. Um, as you may or may not have heard, um, Chris Christie spoke out recently. New Jersey's Governor Chris Christie response in a recent radio interview to a question about legal marijuana was in keeping with his tough on crime persona. A former prosecutor, potential presidential candidate, Christie has long been a staunch opponent of pot. At one time, lambasting tax revenue generated from the sale of legal recreational marijuana as blood money. I will crack down and not permit it, he told radio host Hugh Hewitt, who had asked whether legal marijuana sales in Colorado and Washington state should be allowed. Marijuana is an illegal drug under federal law and the state should not be permitted to sell it and profit from it. Uh, That's what he says. Christie's comments put him on the conservative end of the divide over marijuana among both declared and likely Republican candidates for president. One that goes far beyond whether they've ever inhaled. Each of the current prospective members of the GOP filed uh, uh, field rather opposes full legalization of marijuana, although they differ somewhat on medicinal use. But if the candidates are hewing to the views of Republican voters on questions of legalization, they're running against the tide of opinion in the country overall a conundrum the party faces on a host of social issues, including same-sex marriage. Uh, In a recent Pew Research Center study, 53% of Americans polled said that they support legalizing marijuana, compared with 44% who were opposed. The political divide was stark. Only 39% of Republicans favored legalization, compared with 59% of Democrats and 58% of independents. Surprise, surprise. Still, there was some nuances among Republicans when asked whether the federal government should enforce its anti-pot laws in states that allowed marijuana use. 54 percent said it should not, while 43 percent said the government should enforce federal marijuana laws. The result points uh, to one of the central dilemmas confronting the party's voters and candidates on the issue of marijuana. They favor a weaker federal government and giving more power to the states in general. But when it comes to pot, oh, no. A substantial block of the party wants the federal government to rein the states in. So this is a classic case of wanting to uh, have your cake and eat it, too, or uh, eat your brownies and uh, want it to. You want to have the brownies and also eat them. Is that so much to ask? This whole idea of legalized marijuana is twofold for Republicans, said David Kopel, an associate policy analyst at the Cato Institute who has researched drug policy. Opposition to marijuana use plays well with conservatives, which is the core voter base in the primary. Yet that stance is not popular with the larger electorate. And he said the idea of states' rights and limiting the reach of federal government is critical. It's crucial to Republican voters and thus to candidates seeking support. In the range of Republican views, Christie's opinion or opposition rather to state decision making and medicinal use of marijuana are the most conservative. For, uh, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush and Senators Marco Rubio of Florida and Ted Cruz of Texas has said they oppose marijuana legalization, either medicinal or recreational, but agree that it's up to states to decide. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker shares the same view on marijuana, although last year he signed a bill that allows cannabinoid oil, uh, cannabidiol, to be used uh, to uh, treat children who suffer from seizures. It's all wrapped around the kids and the seizures, isn't it? I mean... Uh, That is the be-all and end-all of of medical marijuana, kids and seizures. Uh, Not that it's a bad thing, uh, but it seems to be, in many eyes, the be-all and end-all, unless you happen to be in a wheelchair or on your deathbed. And let me just remind you, as it relates to the deathbed issue, uh, most of the hospices in the country are federally funded. They, They accept money from the federal government, which means, guess what? Your hospice patient isn't getting his medical marijuana either. 
Go figure that one. If we see in Colorado teen drug use skyrocketing dramatically, I suspect the citizens of other states are going to be a lot slower to make that change if we see the laboratory of democracy. Gosh, this policy is really hurting people, Cruz said in an interview with a local reporter in March. Several surveys taken since legal marijuana sales took effect in Colorado more than a year ago have shown no increase in use by teens. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who has tapped himself as a different kind of Republican, is on the permissive end of the spectrum amongst the GOP field. Uh, Paul has sought to ease penalties for drug convictions and supports medicinal marijuana, although he has not supported legalizing marijuana for recreational use. His father, Republican uh, former Rep. uh, Ron Paul of Texas, has been a vocal supporter of legalizing marijuana and has also worked in Congress to end federal regulations that make it illegal. In February, uh, Senator Paul, who has uh, gone on the record as having smoked marijuana in the past, calls Bush a hypocrite for opposing medicinal marijuana use despite having smoked pot himself. Cruz also acknowledges having smoked pot. If you've got MS in Florida, Jeb Bush voted to put you in jail if you go to a local drugstore to get medical marijuana, Paul said in an interview with Yahoo. Yet he was doing it for recreational purposes, and it's a different standard for him because he was from a very wealthy family going to a wealthy school, and he got off scot-free. Isn't that the story? A Hillary Rodham Clinton, the Democratic frontrunner, has not commented recently on marijuana legalization. In a July radio interview, she said, this is from last year, she said more studies were needed to see what kind of results we get from both medical marijuana and from recreational marijuana before we make any far-reaching conclusions. During her first White House run in 2008, Clinton was opposed to legalization. Marijuana legally remains a potent issue in key electoral states, which guarantees that the candidates will be drawn into the debate. And it's about time. I like to hear people speak out on this issue. At least Chris Christie, although he's uh, opposed and doesn't see the light on this issue, uh, as, as he doesn't see the light on many other issues, At least he has the balls enough to stand up and say what he's for or what he's against. It seems that many of these other candidates, uh, save Rand Paul perhaps, um, are pussing out. They're standing on the sidelines uh, waiting to be asked about this so that they can either not answer the question in a delicate way or answer the question in a way that doesn't answer the question, which is the same thing if you figure out what I just said. Uh, Colorado is at the center of a lawsuit filed with the Supreme Court by Nebraska and Oklahoma, two conservative heartland states, which alleges legal marijuana is flowing across state borders and burdening their communities. The Supreme Court has not decided whether it will hear the case. Laura Carno, a Republican strategist in Colorado, said the argument to keep the federal government from infringing on states' rights resonates with Republicans and unaffiliated voters, which are a key voting bloc in her presidential swing state. Uh, There's an independent spirit in the West and in Colorado. This is a new experiment, Carno said. But it doesn't matter if the candidates are for or against marijuana. The bigger, more important question is, if we don't want Washington telling us what to do, uh, that's the case. If your platform as a candidate, I'm sorry, if if that's your platform as a candidate, it's not going to play well. So on marijuana and issues like health care, it's a safe bet for these candidates to lead the decisions up to the states. That's the safest bet. You control it locally. We don't want to take we don't want to usurp that authority or power over uh, your self-regulation, over your self-control in your little area. It, it works that way from the federal government to the states and from the state government to the cities. That seems to be the most popular method. Um, but I'll put a, just put a bookmark on that segment of this conversation because I'll come back to that in a minute. Hopefully, if I can, if I can remember to get back there. Uh, Floyd Carulli, a Denver-based nonpartisan pollster who has surveyed voters on the issue for several years, said the idea of medicinal marijuana is not up for debate in Colorado, even among Republicans. It's been around since the early 2000s and is here with, a li- with little or no dispute, he said. Even with legal marijuana, the recreational sorts... The idea among Democrats and certainly many Republicans is live and let live. It's a live and let live attitude in Florida, which votes early in the primary season. 
and joins Colorado as a swing state in the general election. State Senator uh, Jeff Brandes, a Republican, was a sponsor of recently defeated legislation that would have allowed marijuana to be voted for medicinal purposes. In 2014, Florida ballot measure uh, that would have allowed medicinal use prompted a multi-million dollar blizzard of TV ads. Uh, Voters favored it by 58 to 42 percent margin, but state law required 60 percent for passage. Bush and Rubio opposed the measure. Science shows people can benefit, especially uh, someone dying of a terminal illness like Lou Gehrig's disease. Brandy said, noting that Bush and Rubio were wise to propose leaving the issue to the states. It's an alternative form of medicine and should be an option. Do you see how this is just such a lie? I mean, do you see how even the people who want to argue these issues in places of authority, in legislative circles, in committees, in hearings, and in votes before their legislature, they take this issue with some clown shoes attached? I'm just saying there are people with the rainbow wig on standing up in front of a microphone at a legislature hearing, whether it's a hearing or whether they're voting or whether they're debating on the floor. They've got on their big, giant, floppy clown shoes, and they've also got on the rainbow wig. Um, they might have left the clown nose at home. Maybe the, the clown nose, maybe the squirting flower uh, they left at home. Uh, you can tell because if they've still got the clown noses. Uh, uh, um. Some of these people just don't know the facts. And this always has been and always will be an information war. I mean, all the politicians that we've spoken to about this issue who've dug into this topic have dug down past the surface and have reached into the deep, dark, rich soil of this subject and have understood it on their own terms and in their own minds, where they've actually done the research, done the work, gotten dirty hands, put in some elbow grease, and and really uh, honestly looked at this subject. All those people have told us on this very program, every single one of them, save none, has made the argument that this is nothing more than an educational campaign. This isn't about the facts. This isn't about what happened or what didn't happen. This isn't about research. This isn't about kids. This is about educating people about the truth. We'll get back more with Medical Marijuana News next. It started with Weed 1. Some have called it a watershed moment. Then came Weed 2. It's absurd that we would have to do this to get medicine. Now Dr. Sanjay Gupta is at it again, and he's reaching higher than ever with Weed 3. I never thought I would be smoking weed in the hospital. The movement behind it. We demand this plant go through the process of the FDA. The radical research. I have to say I'm kind of stunned. Weed 3, the marijuana revolution. Each week, Pot Pitch takes a look at different medical or legal pot business as they attempt to seek investment capital and partners in order to take their business to the next level. What do investors like? And which entrepreneurs are shown the door? Real venture capitalists, smart entrepreneurs, and exciting business models in a brand new industry. Cannabis. Pot Pitch. Find out what this new marijuana industry will look like and who its players will be. Real deals, real people, real decisions. Pot Pitch at potpitch.com and featured on the Full Melt Radio Show. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Does your dog or cat suffer with joint disorders, arthritis, anxiety, cancer, chronic pain, or other ailments? Hemp or cannabis based medicinal products are now legal. Why should your pets go without the same options that we have available? Try Satibis, a daily hemp oil with CBD. Satibis is quality inspected and made in the USA. Easy to use drops are applied directly to your pet's food. For your pet's wellness, try Satibis Drops. 
Ask for Succubus at your local pet store or learn more at PetPain.com. With this warmer weather, I get more active. Headaches and pains keep me from doing things I enjoy, like golfing and working outside my yard. Toledo Hemp Center's new location, 1415 Sylvania Avenue, has shown me there is an alternative to pharmaceutical drugs. I use CBD, cannabidiol, infused hemp lotions, oral sprays, and topical oils. Thank you, Toledo Hemp Center, for helping me restore and maintain my health with no side effects and no high. Find out more at ToledoHempCenter.com. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to The Full Milk Show. My heart is wasted and cut up like a drug. So we're talking about medical marijuana news, marijuana news, cannabis news, hemp news. It's all the same news. And I thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, we just had uh, all this. It's springtime. We've got all the rough weather, uh, your hurricanes and your tornadoes all spinning at once. Uh, it seems that the uh, recent storm, the tropical storm that festered up the East Coast, has washed more than 12 pounds of marijuana up on the Atlantic Beach. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, if you're one of those guys out there with the uh, search, the, the, what is that, the metal detector? You're out there trying to find coins and jewelry, and you're to beep, beep. Nope, that's not it. Beep. Oh, look, a penny. Beep. And then all of a sudden, what's this big yellow package? It didn't beep. <laughs> It seems uh, more than 12 pounds of pot, exactly 12.35 pounds, uh, washed up on the main part of Atlantic Beach, uh, according to Atlantic Beach Police Chief uh, Jeff Harvey. Uh, Chief Harvey uh, tells us some people walking along the beach Sunday called 911 about a suspicious package on the beach uh, in the area off the circle. Firefighters responding then called in police who opened up the package and found it contained marijuana. It was in a it was wrapped in brown paper and taped up. And um, let me just tell you that this package had barnacles all over it. <laughs> so it's not like it was a fresh toss over. It's not like uh, some, you know, it's not like uh, the, the note in a bottle. Uh, this was definitely uh, thrown overboard at some point in time, uh, caught up on something underneath the, uh, the water, grew barnacles on it. And then uh, the uh, hurricane or what would have been a hurricane. Hemicane, no, it's just a, a, you know, tropical storm Uh, or a named tropical system. Let's go that far, because I don't know that it even got to a named tropical storm. Uh, That they churned up the water and uh, (laughs) deposited this 12 pound, 12.35 pound package of pot on the Jersey Shore. So, uh, you know, if if you're out on the beach, uh, it it pays apparently to um, stick around when the waters churn up. Um, if you're looking at Ohio news, um, there was an interesting article uh, today in the uh, Columbus Dispatch. And uh, the headline on the article is what caught my attention, I think, the most. If you pick up the paper, it says legislators look to make uh, push to legalize marijuana difficult. And I'll just read to you uh, some of this article because it's rather long, too. Supporters of uh, three proposals to put legal marijuana in the Ohio Constitution are pushing for a spot on the fall ballot. But there is growing talk of a move by the General Assembly to undercut full legalization. And this is what I've been talking about on other previous programs, that when you do ballot petitions, particularly five different organizations pushing for five different ballot measures in the state of Ohio, either doing medical, doing retail or doing both, most of them doing both. Uh, You put pressure on legislators to do what they were elected to do, and the people have overwhelmingly, very obviously uh, uh, decided about themselves as a general consensus, cannot or will not uh, be able to afford uh, your vote uh, in their favor. I mean, it seems that in a representative democracy, it shouldn't be too difficult to get legislators up off their asses and voting in favor of the people that put them into office. But it seems more and more over, they are busy paying off political favors to other colleagues rather than their constituents and or, uh, you know, making good on a promise to a large contributor because American politics have been bought and paid for by big business in this country. End of story. I don't think there are many people that will argue with me about that. There might be a few, 
but not too many. Sources say legislators want to create more a more restrictive alternative to legalizing marijuana in Ohio. Surprise, surprise. Let's do exactly the opposite of what the people have said they want to do there. That's your job, isn't it? To go against the people that put you into office, right? Go for the people that are handing you the big money. Go against the people that put you into office. Um, that have been uh, these uh, alternative to legalizing marijuana in Ohio than what is being proposed by private for-profit groups as a way to undermine those approaches. One option is uh, passage of House Bill 33, and this goes back to the kids and seizures thing, a proposal that would legalize cannabis-derived medicines for those with seizure disorders, either in its present form or by slightly expanding it. Another option. Oh, that's a real good option. That's going to get everybody in Ohio, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Legislator, uh, to uh, turn away from the ballot proposals that are going to be on the ballot at some point in time, be it this year or next. Uh, your CBD only law, expanding it a tiny bit. That's the answer, right? I just uh, I wish I had a big, giant uh, mallet and a gong right now because I'd be slamming that gong as hard as I could make that sucker scream. Either of those legislative options, theoretically, uh, would make oh, another option is a legislatively initiated ballot issue. So, again, they would put this on. the. This is like um, Michigan recently did uh, tried to get the uh, the legislators recently tried to get Michigan uh, to raise their sales tax by one percent. So it's currently at six percent. If you raise it by one percent, we'll generate enough money that we can patch all those potholes. Uh, it's a it's a public safety problem. The bridges are crumbling. It's not just a recent issue. This is an ongoing, persistent issue where legislators have diverted money away from the road tax for years and years, paying for their pork barrel pet projects because they couldn't find a way to raise money for those projects. They'd rather divert the money from the road tax. Shh, nobody knows. Uh, the roads will, st- you know, they're good enough. We'll throw some more uh, mud in them. They'll be okay. Uh, they'll hold together another year. Don't worry for the next five years. We don't have to worry about this gas tax going to pay for fixing or maintaining the roads. Now they're in such a state in Michigan that they've crumbled to crap. And the try the legislature, rather than again, uh, putting up, pulling up their bootstraps and saying, Hey, we've got to fix the roads. Um, we, and we've diverted all this money away. Shh. Don't tell us. We diverted them. Don't tell anyone. We diverted the money away. Keep that under. Your, don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Uh, we got to raise some new money to fix the roads. So we'll, rather than just raising those funds ourselves by, by uh, you know, authorizing some funds from another location, one of their pork barrel projects probably, uh, to uh, perhaps the big Senate offices that they just bought. Huge legislative, brand new, million, bill, million dollar offices. Spent millions of dollars on this. Uh, can't find a way to, to, to fix the roads. Got new offices, though. Got those shiny offices. Um, this is what legislators are doing in Ohio. This is one of the things they're considering. Rather than doing the hard work themselves and finding the money like in Michigan to pay for the roads in Ohio, uh, finding a way to do the bidding of people, um, we're going to give it back to you. Hey, we're going to punt that ball back uh, because that's a hot potato we don't want to touch. Um so they want to create an, a, a legislatively initiated ballot issue that would legalize marijuana for medical purposes, but in ways far more restricted than the ballot proposals being discussed currently. Either of those legislative options theoretically would make the prospect of defeating a well-funded proposal uh, by for-profit groups easier, sources said. None of the existing ballot bids is a foregone conclusion, but responsible Ohio's for-profit plan for 10 investor-owned uh, marijuana growing sites is far ahead of the others. Backers already have collected 250,000 of 305,591 ballot signatures of registered voters required to qualify for this year's November 3rd ballot. They have a group of well-based, well-heeled uh, in- investors uh, reportedly willing to spend $20 million to pass the issue and begin making money. So, um, you know, this is just a portion of the story. There's, a, there's much more about this. Uh, but there's this new, uh, there's another new group. Uh, they're called Better Ohio. Or is it Better for Ohio? It's Better for Ohio. Um, 
and they want to do same thing that responsible Ohio wants to do, which is to uh, but but increase the number of grows. So instead of having um, 10 grows throughout the state, uh, this would pitch for 40 grows. And um, it seems that they've already managed to hire a firm to collect those signatures. Um, Also today um, in Ohio, Ohioans to end prohibition. It seems that they've turned in their language to the attorney general to get uh, their ballot petition on uh, in the groove. Now, um, the difference between a better Ohio or better for Ohio and responsible Ohio um, and Ohioans to end prohibition, the big difference between them, uh, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, uh, these other two groups have uh, both hired their firms to collect signatures, one of them having apparently collected about 250,000 signatures of the 350,000. They only need a little over 100,000 more signatures and a few more maybe uh, to get uh, this uh, on the ballot this fall. That's the big difference because uh, Better for Ohio is trying to do the same thing, get their competing initiative up there with responsible Ohio's, uh, assuming that they get it on the ballot, and it seems like they are, uh, up there with it to get on this year's November 3rd ballot. Oh, this is an off-year cycle. Uh, this is not a good year to get people to turn up at the polls. And there's going to be a lot of money spent on television for who you should vote for, why you should vote for them, uh, what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent. I say you probably can't believe most of what's going to be out there. The only way you can ensure you know this subject is to go out and research it yourself Read the ballot language, understand it, digest it, and then vote accordingly if it gets there. We've got more news uh, coming up next on the Full Melt Show. Hang on. Don't go away. You're getting the Full Melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Each week, Pot Pitch takes a look at different medical or legal pot business as they attempt to seek investment capital and partners in order to take their business to the next level. What do investors like? And which entrepreneurs are shown the door? Real venture capitalists, smart entrepreneurs, and exciting business models in a brand new industry. Cannabis. Pot Pitch. Find out what this new marijuana industry will look like and who its players will be. Real deals. Real people. Real decisions. Pot Pitch at potpitch.com and featured on the Full Melt Radio Show. Imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine. The Marijuana Patients Organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life. Visit the MPO at MarijuanaPatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today, MarijuanaPatients.org. It started with Weed 1. Some have called it a watershed moment. Then came Weed 2. It's absurd that we would have to do this to get medicine. Now Dr. Sanjay Gupta is at it again, and he's reaching higher than ever with Weed 3. I never thought I would be smoking weed in the hospital. The movement behind it. We demand this plant go through the process of the FDA. The radical research. I have to say I'm kind of stunned. Weed 3, the marijuana revolution. They're parasites. They've got no contribution to this society. They're preying on our community and our kids. It's going to end bad. We've got exactly $100,000 in cash in the back of this car. I bet there's guys right there in that prison for doing just what we're about to do. I want the Breckenridge Cannabis Club to be a household name. This is us pioneering a new industry. He's going after every resort town in Colorado. His plan is brilliant. 
This is a big boy operation now. We are not the Amsterdam of the Rockies. We're Breckenridge. Absolutely unbelievable to us that this has happened so quickly. That's when the town erupted. All hell can break loose. I think we have an image to protect. The powerful elite has definitely put the pressure on. Everyone is playing everyone. They're going to have a target painted on their back. That is a real threat. There's $2 billion to be had next year. I plan to take more than my fair share. High Profits, Sunday night at 10 Eastern on CNN. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Hey, you can find us on the radio Monday through Friday live from 7 until 8 p.m. Uh, and uh, this program, uh, you know, it's syndicated. It's everywhere across the United States. But I want to tell you, uh, you can find us most easy at thefullmelt.com. Or if you go to the top of the page, I'd like you to uh, like and follow us at Facebook and Twitter, respectively. Also, uh, follow through to the Spreaker site. Click on the Spreaker site. Like and follow us at Spreaker. Uh, you can find us also available on iTunes. Uh, look it up. Uh, go to the iTunes uh, place and look for the Full Melt. Uh, and all of our programs, our prior programs are there. We're talking about marijuana news. Uh, because it comes in various and sundry forms, it seems like uh, most of the newspaper is filled with it. Um, there's nothing else going on important in America today but other than marijuana, apparently. Um, and I've got a crap ton of stories. I could tell you I could go on for hours and hours just reading the current news about marijuana. So I'm going to weed through a bunch of it. I'll weed through it. I said weed through it. Um, and uh, to get down to some brass tacks. So. There's this important thing. I told you we were talking before we talked uh, with a, a senator from uh, Pennsylvania who was telling us about his bill. It's now headed to the Senate for a vote. Uh, this according to WTAE. Um, they're talking about a medical marijuana bill, a comprehensive bill that they've been debating for a while, uh, going to the Senate uh, and getting voted out there. Now, if and, and the senator believes that he could that it's sponsored this bill, a conservative Republican senator, by the way. Uh, believes that he can get this passed by the Senate. If he does, the bigger question is: Will the House, uh, will the House do the same thing? Uh, I'd love to see this uh, become enacted into law before the year's end. And you know, done by conservative Red uh, Pennsylvania, be one of the you know first Midwest states besides um, Michigan to do this, and certainly the first that did it legislatively all by their lonesome. Uh, taking a bigger turn uh, to um, this uh, subject, if I can find it here. Uh, lawmakers tonight in Oregon facing a key vote on medical marijuana. Uh, this is out of Salem. It was published today. Uh, this story is available uh, by the Registered Guard. So it's registerguard.com published the story. Oregon lawmakers face a key vote on uh, marijuana tonight, medical marijuana. A special committee of lawmakers will hold a key vote tonight on a bill placing new limits on the state's medical marijuana program. The limits in the Senate Bill 844 are designed to staunch a substantial flow of marijuana ostensibly grown in Oregon for the medical program uh, for the black market. Lawmakers say preventing that black market leakage is essential to setting up the recreational market uh, that the voters approved in November. But some growers and patients in the program have, been, have adamantly opposed a bill. Senate Bill 844 includes limits on the total number of plants allowed per medical marijuana grow site, a mandatory tracking system for most of that marijuana, allowing state health officials to inspect certain grow sites for compliance, and restricting marijuana growing, processing, and selling to people who have lived in Oregon for at least two years. But while they've reached consensus on many points, lawmakers on the committee are at an impasse on several key sections of the bill. They've now been deadlocked for weeks, despite recent efforts from legislative leaders uh, to broker a compromise. Those disagreements include when to implement the plant limits for medical marijuana grow sites and whether to allow cities and counties to ban medical marijuana dispensaries or retailers within their jurisdictions. Uh, the committee uh, meeting starts at 5 o'clock tonight, which um, uh, in Oregonian time, uh, is going to be about another hour from now. But the the, the, the bigger thing uh, that I want to draw people's attention to, because there's another story, uh, and, and it was published in a major publication, too. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was like New York Times, or no, it was Time Magazine. So uh, Time Magazine today put out this article, and I don't have it in front of me. 
But it references the idea of, uh, and, and it wasn't just time, there was a bunch of other people who followed through on this story, about the federal government making uh, an effort through a bill proposed by uh, Senator Rohrbacher of California, I believe, the same guy that uh, restricted the Department of Justice from using federal funds to uh, prosecute states uh, where there, you know, people in states where medical marijuana or retail cannabis has been made allowed. Um, so this bill um, was designed to um, uh, re- modify tax code. And so by taxing marijuana at the federal level, and this is where uh, Senator Rohrbacher is plainly wrong. I'll tell you why. And I've only got a couple minutes to do it. Because um, it, right now, the tax code says that uh, we're going to tax you on your gross, not your net. So on what you sold, not on what you made. And then um, and we're going to tax that at an incredible 90 percent. 90 percent because see, it's ill-gotten goods. And... Uh, because it's illegal federally. Uh, this is, you know, they're basically passing tax code for drug dealers. So we're going to take 90% of anything that you sold. Not what you made, but what you sold. So you might have only made maybe 50%. Uh, they're going to tax you at 90 anyways, giving you a reason to come up with the other 40. Now, what this bill that uh, Rohrbacher has introduced does, and I don't have the, the bill in front of me, um, but I did read it. And what it basically does is it proposes that they tax that at 50 percent rather than 90, giving you a tax break. No, oh, isn't that grand? Um, no deductions. You're not allowed any business deductions under this methodology, uh, under the current law or under this modified law. If Rohrbacher gets this through and chances are it will not. But I want to point out the idea of how this is a twisted focus. And if you're trying to make medical marijuana or marijuana or drug policy better in this country. Uh, The way that you get rid of the black market is to establish a well-regulated market, Uh, just like you do with alcohol. This is why people are doing, you know, uh, marijuana like wine. Um, That's the the mantra that, that, you know, a lot of states out in the West use to try and get their bills passed, eventually getting it done. I think even Colorado used that mantra at one point in time before they did what they did there. But the idea is if you want to eliminate the black market, which is the main goal here, right? You want to keep this money, this product out of the hands of criminals, out of the hands of people who have no morals or sense of focus or or sense of good policy, uh, no uh, ethics, uh, criminals, people with guns and bad intentions. Uh, If you're trying to eliminate that black market, You cannot tax marijuana in a legal regulated market at an exorbitant rate and not expect that black market to maintain and flourish over the additional giant tax burden added because it clearly will. Uh, This is what Ohio's talked about with uh, responsible Ohio saying, hey, we're going to keep this at like 12 percent. You know, in Colorado, there's a, a tremendous a problem on their hands because they've taxed this at a fairly high rate. And in other places, it's even higher on the West Coast. And and what they've discovered is that if you tax this overburdened, if you overreach on the taxes, that rather than stamp, stamp out the black market, creating a new visible above board legal business in this country, You've you've created a problem because that tax is going to keep people of trying to avoid it. Uh, There are tax cheats everywhere in this country, most of them big corporations. Because if you're just a little guy like me or you, uh, you you know, and you cheat the government out of its tax dollars, they're going to come with you uh, full ball and hammer. I mean, they're going to come loaded for bear to punish you financially. And perhaps criminally in jail. Um, if you're a corporation, uh, you just pay the lawyers to get you out of that stuff, right? Uh, you just, you know what, we'll pay a big fine. Nobody's going to jail. Uh, nobody's being indicted. That's the thing, though. So you can't overburden tax on on either medical marijuana, especially medical marijuana, Uh if you expect that you're going to stamp out the black market and that's the overall goal here, it's not just to reduce the prison population. Uh, but if you're, if you're doing this regulation 
and then you get really zealous about the money that you're going to make. You just come tongue a wagon as a government about the money that you're going to rake in with this brand new marketplace. This br- hey, we finally agree with these guys that have been yelling about pot all these years. Uh, we're going to pass and we're going to be a part of that marketplace and the government is just going to ring tail. Uh, they're going to just cavalcades of money are going to fall from the sky because of our tax plan. Uh, guess what? You're going you're gonna to squish people right out of the very program you created uh, because it's just as bad as the former one. It, it, it's going to get smaller, uh, but you're never going to get rid of that black market. And, and the bad guys are still going to be doing bad deeds. That's all we got for today. It's all that we got time for. We're up against the clock. Join us again tomorrow for news, culture, and lifestyle on cannabis right here on The Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.